Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're gonna continue on with our ye old pop topper case study, and we're gonna start looking into finite element analysis or FEA studies. And that's also commonly referred to as simulation studies here in SOLIDWORKS. So if we're here inside the configuration tab, we wanna go ahead and start off by changing our configuration from machine or wherever we left off at to plastic. So let's go ahead and select plastic. And that is the plastic configuration with the plastic material, uh, material that we applied in the last video. And now we're going to go and find the SOLIDWORKS add-ins tab. So up here in this top ribbon here, we're going to go and find SOLIDWORKS add-ins and we're going to locate SOLIDWORKS simulation. So that's just the L block that's multicolor. And once we click on it, just give it a second, but it's going to load in the SOLIDWORKS simulation tab. So that just got added into the right here, right here where it says uh, simulation. And I can go ahead and click on simulation. And inside that simulation tab, we have the ability to start a new study. So let's go ahead and click on new study. And you'll notice that we have the option to select from a handful of different simulation studies uh, to choose from. So we have static, frequency, topology, design, thermal, buckling, fatigue, nonlinear, linear dynamic, drop test, and pressure vessel design. We're just going to do a basic study. This is our first introduction into finite element analysis. And we're just going to stick with static. So this is going to be a singular load applied once and we're gonna change the name of static one to plastic. So that's going to be our configuration that we're pulling from. So go ahead and hit the green check mark. And we can use um, a number of these different features or icons up here in the command manager to set up like a connection wizard or a fixture wizard or a force wizard. But in my opinion, you might get a little bit lost up in there but it's good, especially for new users, because it'll step you through and ask you a handful of questions and it'll give you a best practice advice of what to do. Um, at least setting this one up, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna show you two ways how to do this. One is going to be a simplistic way and then one's gonna be like a more better practice way. But we're gonna start off by just uh, applying our fixtures and our loads uh, over here on the left-hand side of the feature tree. So whenever we set up a new simulation, we'll notice that we have a specific simulation set up uh, for that study. So down here in the tab, it says plastic. That is only gonna be representative of that plastic study that we just set up for the static. Um, if we ever had to make a change to the geometry, so say we run this test and the test results show that uh, the geometry is bad, I can go over here to the model and I can go over the feature tree and change it accordingly and then re-update, rebuild, and then run the study again. If I wanted to run a different study, say on a different material, I would have to go back here to model, go back into my configuration tab, change the configuration, and then start a new study separately, independent of that plastic study so my results aren't lost. So I'll show that once we get there, but just keep that in mind, um, don't, change your configuration, go back to that plastic, rename it, and run that study all over again because you're going to lose all your results. Uh, but I'm here in the plastic configuration. I'm here in the plastic tab uh, for the simulation, so I'm all good. Let's go over here to fixtures. Again, this is the basic setup. If I go over here to fixtures, if I right-click on it, I can choose fixed geometry. So all this is saying is, hey, there's a piece of fixed geometry that I want to always be set in space. And then when I apply the force, it's going to reference that fixed geometry and apply it as like a moment or a lever arm. So again, the simple way to set this up, I'm just gonna choose one fixed face and I'm gonna choose one force face. So this one fixed face, I'm gonna choose as this flat right there. Again, probably not the best practice approach of it, but just let's go ahead and understand how to set up a study and then analyze the results. So hit the green check mark, and then underneath fixed geometry, I can choose external loads. So I right click on external loads and I can choose a number of different loads that I can apply. Uh, this is just going to be a standard typical force. And I'm gonna change this from SI to English because in the case study, I was asking 
us to apply 50 pounds of force to the end of the bottle opener to see if it would break from plastic. And then we're going to go and try to test 6061 to its max extent and then 356 to its max extent. So at least in this uh, plastic study, we're going to test it to 50 pounds. And then the force or the face that we're going to apply that to is going to be that face right there. Typically, if we wanted to set this up again in best practice, I would choose this radius, but then I'd have to apply a couple different steps to make sure or ensure that the force is always uh, directed up. And then if we have multiple faces to, uh, uh, selected, just make sure that this is per item and changes to total. So we're not just applying 50 pounds here, 50 pounds here, and 50 pounds here. That'd be a bit excessive. Uh, so then go ahead and hit the green check mark. So once we have the fixed face and then the force face applied, we're going to have to set up a mesh. So go ahead and right click on the mesh and then we're going to create a mesh. And again, there's a couple different approaches that we can do. If we wanted a more um, accurate uh, study, we would just increase this edge or this line here to fine. We can also go in here to mesh parameters and change it from standard mesh, which is just best practice all around. We can also change it to curvature based mesh. Maybe we have a lot of curves on it or a blended curvature based mesh. I usually like sticking with the blended curvature. I think that's like the best of both worlds. Um, but in this instance, we can just do a standard mesh and then we can reset it to, you know, basic out of the box if you didn't make any changes. So again, this is just a very basic study. We'll hit the green check mark. And what this will do is it'll create a nice STL file for us. Uh, and you can tell that it's STL because it's broken up in all these different meshes uh, as just small triangles. Obviously, if we increase that from, you know, the standard to fine, those triangles will get much smaller and it'll be a bigger file to process. It'll take more time to process it. But before we go ahead and click this run study button, I want to make sure that we have our file folder set up for the study so that that information is placed in the correct location. Because if I just hit run study right now, all of my study files, which there are a lot, will be uh, saved to that initial folder that we established when we saved this file, which can be a little bit overwhelming, especially when we have multiple studies going from 6061, 356, and then plastic. So what I'll need to do is select plastic up here in the feature tree of the simulation study, right click on it, and then go to properties and then see where it says save results to document folder. Uh, this is the default folder where it was pulling from uh, of the original save file. We're going to deselect save results and then hit on the select folder. And what we'll do is we'll actually create a new folder for FEA studies. And then inside that folder, we'll also create one for plastic. And then we'll create another one for 6061 and another one for 356. So once we have that plastic folder uh, created, we're going to click on it and then hit select folder. And then we're going to hit OK. And then it's asking us to copy any results files. We don't have any results, so it doesn't matter if we hit yes or no. I'm just going to hit no. So now that I have all of my paths set up, I have all of my faces that are fixed or forced set up. And my mesh setup, I can go ahead and confidently run this study. So let's go ahead and click on run study. And then it's saying that this medium high impact uh, chamfer or whatever, uh, switching to linear elastic isotropic, which is fine. We're just going to hit OK. Fail to open result files. Um, this is good. We are seeing that there is a, a an excessive displacement because I'm applying way too much force for this application, especially if it's plastic. So go ahead and hit yes. We're going to continue the study. And I'm going to kind of trick you here. So when this uh, FEA study is finished, we're going to see a heat map of the forces that are applied. So what we're seeing right now is that, hey, Everything seems to be fine, right? It's all blue, it's all green. See maybe a little bit of red there. Uh, that's actually a singularity point um, from the fixed faces that we established, and I'll talk about that more later. But uh, all in all, not a bad study. However, when we see the yield strength here, when it passes from elastic to plastic, 
um, and that's like hitting the point of no return where you're actually seeing material deformation, um, we notice that there's a red arrow here and then there's a red arrow somewhere here in the dark blue to light blue, which is telling me that it's way above what um, is appropriate for this material. So for example, the max or the uh, most force or more stress that is present right now is all the way up here to 1.775 to the eighth power. That's kind of hard to read and it's kind of hard to understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and process this chart uh, to be a little bit easier to understand. And what I need to do first and foremost is right click on this chart over here on the right hand side. And I'm gonna go to edit definition. And once I click on edit definition, I'm gonna ensure that my study is running in the same units. So we were using megapascals before. So I hit this drop down menu. I have Newtons per millimeter square. Make sure that that's MPA, megapascals. And then I'm gonna go here to chart options. And inside chart options, I always like uh, showing the max annotation. And then likewise, I want to change this not from a scientist scientific standpoint where it has exponential values, I want to see whole numbers, like the ones that I was seeing in the material properties when I was setting this up in the last video. So I'm going to change this from scientific to general. And that's going to move all of those exponential values to whole number values. And then I'll hit the green check mark. So now I see a value of 178. It's a little bit more easily understood, especially when we were talking about, and I was explaining, yield strength and tensile strength. So we had a yield strength of 45 for plastic. So what I'm seeing here is that this is quite a bit over 45, in the sense that this is probably going to break catastrophically, even though that I'm still seeing a heat map of generally blue and green. So what I need to do is I need to change my top or my max value from instead of displaying at 178, which is what is present, max, I want to actually change this to the max yield strength. So I want to see from the point of no return that uh, transition from uh, elastic deformation to plastic deformation. So I'm going to double click or click once uh, rather on this 178 and I'm going to change that 178 value to 45, which is the yield strength. And it's located right there. I hit the green check mark. And now the same study is showing a much different result. And we're seeing a heat map that is showing quite a bit of uh, breakage or material failure. To the point where if I actually look at this, I can, I can right click where it has this like little mesh net here of the yield pop topper and I can apply and edit material and I can take a look and I can see that the acrylic, if I change this to megapascals again, um, I can see that the yield strength, which is when it transitions from uh, elastic deformation to plastic deformation, um, is 45 and then my tensile strength is 73. So this is double and then some, and then some of like the fracture point. So that is pretty accurate. And I'm gonna go ahead and call the study pretty good. That's exactly what I wanted to see. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about setting up this study uh, to be a bit more accurate. I just wanted to show you how to simply set up a study, run the study, and then process some of these results so they're a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to end this one here and we'll continue on in the next video.